All right, YouTube, it's me, David Harry, your favorite YouTuber and vlogger. So in this video, what I'm going to be doing is comparing the Rode VideoMic Go 2 with the Rode Video Micro 2. Now, what I'm gonna do is do this as a blind A, B, which means I'm just gonna talk and then I will alternate A and B as I go through the video. And then at the end, I will let you know which microphone was which. So in order to do this kind of like comparison and make it a bit easier on me to try and do it in one take, I'm just gonna spout off a bunch of things which is definitely going to be able to give us an idea of what's going on now the first thing that i've got to say here there will be bad handling noise and there will also be plosives neither of those things are going to affect this test and in fact they may actually help uh, anytime they occur because it will actually show the similarities or the exact sameness of both of these microphones and the way that they handle both of those things anyway so that's one thing that we need to bear in mind bad handling and plosives it's just unfortunately down to the way that i've got it set up and the reason why is because i have got this as like for like as possible this is basically both microphones being treated almost exactly the same i'll explain why almost in a second um, and in order to do this i can't really use different cables so i've got to hold the thing here and get it close to the xlr inputs on the converter here for the uh, the a7 mark three okay now first thing is why am i doing this well i wanted to know what the differences were like but also one of my transatlantic youtube buddies who is wayne from wayne rex he made a comment on like my video from last night to do with like you know me first tested the micro too and basically he was kind of questioning what really is the difference between these two things and i think more to the point what wayne was getting at was for 20 dollars more would you really go for the like the micro as opposed to the go to when there's only a 20 dollars difference between them now i will do a separate video about what wayne actually was going on about in that comment and i will also kind of delve a bit deeper as to like you know the physical characteristics and stuff like that and also the peripherals and things like that between the two microphones but basically this video was basically spared on by wayne from wayne rex so if you're into your microphone and audio stuff definitely go and check out wayne's channel after you've watched this video he makes amazing audio microphone and camera videos and stuff like that he's brilliant anywho the setup what it is oh yeah before i go any further um anyone from road watching this video i can definitely confirm to you that both of these microphones definitely clip the input on the a7 III regardless of the level being set so what's happening as i've already said is that the peak voltages on the peak transients are disturbing whatever is the disturbing as far as the input is concerned on the 3.5 millimeter now as me and road uh been chatting through some some of these things here there is the assumption that it's down to the limiters inside the sony cameras yes it probably is that but it may well just be straight overloading of the input and obviously that peak voltage is just too much for the preamps anyway but regardless of which way that is or it isn't the outcome is still the same it is generating clips on the input even though the record level is like way below zero and i know this for sure because right now we definitely shouldn't be hearing any clipping going on and that's because i'm now using the sony xlr input unit for the a7 III. so that's one thing that i'll actually do a quick video about as well just to show people that example which basically will prove the point of what i'm saying is that both of these microphones have far too like the, the far too loud on the output and the peak voltages are disturbing some of the inputs on some of the cameras that they go into anywho what i've got here is both of the microphones set up as like for like as possible as we will see here one of the microphones is not like the other as in i'm not going to start singing sesame street what it is i'm using the same suspension cradle off uh, the go to uh, so i've got two go to's but uh, what i've done i've used one of the go to's suspension cradles with the micro two here and obviously the go to's obviously got its own suspension cradle on that's just to make it as like for like as possible then the two cables that i'm using the two audio cables are both off the go to's once again as like for like as possible i don't know you might see that like, the micro two might be kind of bobbing about a little bit don't worry about that it is not going to be disturbing anything it's just that it is not attached to the rear part 
of uh, the shock mount there because obviously it's not as long as the uh, go to. Anywho, they're then you they're then plugged into a Rode VXLR Plus and a Rode VXLR Pro, um, and both of those are basically only being used in this instance just to drop the voltage of the forty eight phantom forty eight volts phantom power from the XLR unit here down to electric power or plug in power. Now there is a slight difference here between the Plus and the Pro. One of them obviously does balance on its output, but in this particular instance, it won't be an issue because as we can see here, both of them, oh, I've got to be careful here, both of those are plugged directly into the XLR inputs. Let me just see if we can get a bit of a better idea of what's going on there. Give you a little look at that XLR unit and stuff like that. So yet in this instance, there's no cable run between it, between the VXLRs and the XLR inputs. So in this instance, they're both realistically just being used as a voltage converters. Okay, so exactly as like for like as possible here. And also, ironically, well not ironically, but the input levels for both of the microphones are set exactly the same. And I can confirm to you right now, during my quick test that I've done before I've done this video, that both of them are producing the same levels at the same input gain. And, you know, although this is going to be as matched as best as possible between channel one and channel two, despite the fact that there will be slight differences, setting all the settings exactly the same for both microphones yields the exact same input level. So that's another thing to consider. Okay, so I don't know whether there's much really else to talk about here because there are a few things that I will delve into in other videos. Again, similarities between these two things and also stuff to do with like other things to do with like the what road have been doing recently with some of their microphones and what have you. Anywho, the answer here is microphone A has been the go-to, which is this one. Which obviously means then that microphone B or microphone 2 has been the micro 2, which is obviously that one. Now, did you hear any difference whatsoever between these two microphones as I've gone through this video because as far as I can hear they are basically identical to one another and there are other very similar things to do with these microphones physically as well although one looks bigger than the other things to do with the interference tubes and stuff like that which I will go into in another video because I don't want to drag this one out longer than what it needs to be because this really was only meant to have been an example to give to people so that they could hear what was going on with things. Yeah, anyway, I think that'll do for this video and what have you. Now, some people out there might be thinking to themselves, Dave, you're just like giving Rode a bad time with these microphones and stuff like that. And, you know, to a degree, you're quite possibly right. However, I expect more from Rode and I don't expect them to be releasing microphones, which are going to cause issues in certain setups where people have already used other Rode microphones. As a, for instance, if you've been using a micro one, for instance, say with something like, hold on like a ZV-1, right? Or any number of other microphones, uh, any, any number of other cameras where it was working correctly. If you've been using a Micro 1 with one of them and then you switch over to a Micro 2 and you suddenly start getting clipping and stuff like that, that is the reason or one of the reasons why I draw light to these issues because it's not fair on the end user if they're already used to using a really good setup with a Rode microphone and then they go and update to a better newer version of the mic and then suddenly start running into problems that they won't necessarily understand what those problems are. That's one of the main reasons why I do these videos to draw light to these scenarios and these issues and these problems and also because there's loads of clowns on YouTube doing videos videos who are actually have got problems in their audio and don't even know it and don't actually publicize those problems so if anyone is sitting there thinking that i've just got a massive ad on for road and i'm just going at them and stuff like that it's not for any reason other than i just want people to understand what these problems are because it is going to trip up a bunch of people along the way and stuff like that and a lot of people who may not necessarily understand technically what's going on anywho i think i'll leave it at that because i can feel this video going the wrong way anyhow i'm david harry thank you very much for watching this video take care and goodbye now